God almighty. It's so hot, YouTube. It's so oppressively humid and unpleasant. I fucking hate this weather. Oh, I can't function properly in it. I've done my writing for the day. I'm sitting here doing a little bit of editing at the moment, but it is now officially too hot to bloody work. So, what better thing to do? Since auto-assembly is fast approaching, that's something to get excited about. Yay! I'm really, really looking forward to auto-assembly this year. Ah, oh, can't wait. Next week! Ah, oh, next week! I confirmed my hotel booking this morning. Yes, all is in readiness. Ah, oh, can't wait. Bringing the rant hat this year as well. Hats seem to be a kind of unofficial theme. Last year, fezzes were floating around, and... Um, administrator hats and balaclavas and things, all of which I tried, not all voluntarily, I might add. They were just sort of placed on my head whilst I was sitting around in the bar. So this year I bring my own hat. Rant hat is coming. Um, this video, ah, this video, I've already done it once and it didn't work. My computer destroyed it because it's evil. Um, this is a video for my friend Logan Vance, who was very, 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 very kind to uh, let me have these items for a pittance, a very, very reasonable price indeed. And they are bloody lovely. Beast machines. Beast machines, ladies and gentlemen. Much maligned. Much maligned line. And I, I haven't done many reviews on beast machines, and one of, one of the ones that I did do wasn't wasn't terribly appreciative. I was doing uh, my worst Transformers and uh, Beast Machine Silverbolt was in there. Rightly so, because he's a pile of wank. But Beast Machines, Beast Machines is really weird in terms of the toy line. I love the show. The show is utterly amazing and it's probably, it's probably my favourite Transformers show. Um, just in terms of the writing and the themes that it goes through and the characters and everything. It's really good. It's a really, really good show with a really shit ending. Bear that in mind. Uh, but these toys are from that line. And the thing about the toys from Beast Machines is that you can't judge the entire line as one. Unlike, say, Beast Wars, where there is a very definite aesthetic, there's a very definite style, very coherent style going on. And you'll either love it or you'll, or you'll hate it. It's one of those things. Beast Machines, each toy is an experiment in and of itself. And they don't sit well together. When you put them on a shelf together, there's such disparity between... The sizes of the toys, the scale of the things, but also the design and the quality of them. Some of them are fantastic, some of them are sodding awful. Oh, just utterly lamentable. Supreme Cheetor is unholy in its terribleness. It's such a badly designed toy, but I, I kind of like it and I want it because it's so bad, but I'm not willing to pay a great deal of money for it. These two, these two are part of the Vehicon range. The whole thing with Beast Machines is that they were, they were trying to create a line that appealed to both old school Transformers fans who like their, their Transformers to be entirely robotic and to turn into jets and, and tanks and things, and also fans of the Beast Wars line who liked their bots to be partially organic they can transform into uh, cheetahs and owls and ocelots and other weird things. Never, there was never a duck-billed platypus, was there? Never a platypus in Beast, Beast Wars. I always found that rather disheartening. I'm very surprised the Japanese uh, Beast Wars line didn't happen on that. You can get all sorts of weird and wacky things in that line. These guys are Vehicons. Um, Generally speaking, the Vehicons didn't get the best tunes in Beast Machines. They were kind of on the sidelines, whereas all of the focus was given to the Maximals, who were largely... Even the shit ones are really interesting. This is Obsidian. And he's one of the uh, the latter Vehicon generals who was introduced in the... Um, Beast Machines cartoon, along with his cohort, the beautiful, oh, the utterly stunning Striker. This thing, Logan, ah, oh, Logan, thank you very, very much for this. This is gorgeous. This is just, it's one of those Transformers that you get it in hand and you start to transform it and you realise just how clever it is and beautifully put together and you think, oh, 
does it for me. There's another version of this. There is actually a repaint of it uh, for the Universe line. Uh, Nemesis Striker, who is a Decepticon, who I want from um, Auto Assembly this year. Very, very much. These two, they were two of Megatron's Vehicon Generals, who, unlike the other Vehicon Generals, didn't have their personalities or their sparks messed with to any great degree. Their personalities are the same as they always were, according to them. And they proclaimed themselves to be generals, a pair of generals from the pre vehicon era, when the Maximals and the Predacons ruled Cybertron before Megatron came and wiped them out. Um, and their function was to apparently defend Cybertron against all threats. And in that regard, they're, ve they're both very, very clever. They're both masterful tacticians, incredibly intelligent. And when they first appear in the Beast Machines cartoon, they kind of act as a parody of how villain characters are generally uh, represented in cartoons. They make out that they are dimwits and morons. In fact, their only, their only vocabulary seems to uh, consist of, I think it's, terminate and obliterate respectively that's their catchphrases that's what they roar the whole time but it actually it turns out to be some kind of ruse on their parts to put the maximals um off their guard so to speak they are actually massively clever and supreme tacticians these two they are military geniuses which is nice it's nice to have intelligent villain characters um, and they're kind of ambiguous as well they do switch allegiances throughout the course of the show simply because one thing that can be said for them is that they are myopic they take their function very seriously but their function is all they know they will defend Cybertron to the hilt, regardless of who is in charge of Cybertron. So, at one point they serve Megatron, at one point they join with the Maximals, then they serve Megatron again, then the Maximals, then Megatron again, and so on and so forth. Obsidian is the the quieter of the two, the more considered of the two. He has a beautiful, deep, gravelly voice. I like Obsidian in the show very much. Um, whereas Stryker is much more beefy. She's the female of the two. Very, very odd female Transformer in both character and design. Um, but Obsidian is quieter of the two. I like to think this is this is my own little thing. It's not. It is nothing about this in the canon at all. But I like to think that they were originally a Maximal and Predacon team. Perhaps they were um, commissioned to defend against Rogue Predacon, or maybe even Rogue Maximal Decepticon and Autobot contingents who may have still been out there in the galaxy. And if that's the case, I like to think that Obsidian was the Maximal of the two. Anyway, getting on to the plastic, Obsidian is very different from how he appears in the show. In the show, he's much less rounded than this. He's much more angular, and he looks like he looks a bit like an Apache helicopter. He's got that feeling about him. He's also not green. He's not this sort of day-glow, toxic green. He's grey, and it suits him a bit better. He's also much bigger. He's huge in the show. Big, big character. Uh, but he's quite he's a little toy he's verging on the scout class although he would he would have been packaged as a as a deluxe i think at this point he's quite nice actually he, in his vehicle mode he's really really lovely he's got no real hint of robot going on i don't like his rotor blades his rotor blades they're gimmicky they're, they're sort of generation two gimmicky they can pop off but for no there's no good reason for them to do it i mean he's got that big cannon on the front he's got missile launchers here why why would he use these as weapons and this is how good they are as weapons as well that's what they do. They just fling off. And presumably, once he did that, he would start doing this and flying out of control. That doesn't really make one iota of sense. I don't like that gimmick. But ignoring that redundant little feature, he's a very, very tight, coherent little helicopter. He's very sweet. His transformation's nice as well. He's got an automorph feature. You just bring the back down like that. These form his legs. And the rest kind of forms itself. They just flip out like that and his head flips out automatically as well i never noticed that before that's kind of cute like that now in the show he didn't have legs or feet he was kind of like jet storm in that regard what he did was he had this thing going on like all the the airborne vehicons rather than dining to step on cybertron's metallic service like the rest of us mere mortals he just sort of floated there like that which I rather like. He's a cute little robot mode, actually. He's got this rather slender neck and his head's long and detailed. I like that very, very much. He's got a little bit, a little bit of light piping going on there, but it's utterly useless because there's nothing for it to shine through. Um, but that's his robot mode. It's quite 
cute. These, this part here can split in half to form legs, but they look pathetic. They look so weedy and useless. It's better to have him, and besides which, the cannon points down like that and has a very phallic thing going on. It's not really my cup of tea, I must admit. But in this mode, I really like him. It's, it's the equivalent of Jet Storm's hover mode. It's quite nice. He's, um, he does his job. I would have liked him to have been a little bit bigger to fit better with Striker and to be grey. Uh, there is a repaint of this guy. There's a blue repaint that's beautiful, which, again, I'm going to get from Auto Assembly this year if I can find it. Very, very nice. Like Obsidian a lot. He's very cute. Very sweet. But the star of this, of this pair is this thing. This is Striker. She is kind of the equivalent of Tankor after Tankor regained his personality as Rhinox and went a bit wampy. She is the commander of Megatron's ground-based forces, and she is stunning. She's this big, weighty, Cybertronian all-terrain vehicle. She had these wonderful, big plastic wheels that roll gorgeously, and she's really tight and coherent. I like that. I like it a lot. And she has weight as well. For a plastic figure, she's got a fair bit of weight. She is utterly beautiful. What I really like in this toy, can you see, you probably can't see it on this shitty camera. That will be going very soon, by the way. I'm getting a proper camera to do this stuff with. And I'm also getting, I'm going to get a proper video camera so that I can, I want to make some little movies for YouTube that I, I've written. I've got the scripts for here. I want to make some little independent movies for YouTube. So, um, stay tuned for those. Anyway, can you, I don't know if you can see it on this camera, but the front end of her, these portions, her head and this bit here, are washed. They have a kind of... the grey plastic has been washed with purple ink, which gives them this burnished, corroded metal thing, which is beautiful. Like all Vehicons, her cab area can extend on the neck as if she's got a head in vehicle mode. All of the Vehicons have that. It's an odd little feature, but I kind of like it. It's sweet. She's also, she's kind of difficult to get a hold of these days because she was very limited. She's part of the the Battle for the Spark line, which came, which was a subline which came out in the dying days of Beast Wars, and there just weren't that many of them produced. Basically, she's got a spark crystal there, you press it, and she has a gimmick, her guns. Her guns go. I quite like that. That's It's a nice, noisy little gimmick that isn't too obtrusive. It's kind of sweet. Like it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful vehicle mode, but the transformation of this thing is unbelievably good. She's held together entirely by posts and ports, and all you have to do is just pull them apart. Yeah, and her legs do sometimes pop off. She has ball joints, and inevitably bits will pop off, I'm afraid. That's just kind of the deal with these things. But, as I was saying, you just sort of disengage all of the posts and ports, replacing the bits that fucking pop off, which don't happen too much with her. She is quite tight. And then you reconfigure them to form her bot mode, and it is utterly, utterly brilliant. It's one of those transformations, you don't need instructions for her, she's very, very intuitive. But it's complicated and cool, and it makes you smile. It's one of those things where you go, oh, that's clever, I haven't seen that before. How does her head go now? Oh yes, like that. She has a, a stonking head sculpt. Really, really quite clever. No, 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 no. Let's see, have I got everything right here? I think so. Yes, that's correct, I think. It's kind of difficult to tell with this guy, because she is supreme, superior, shit, uh, ah, uh, I tripped over my own vocabulary there. I do that quite often, especially when I'm not in front of the camera, for some bizarre reason. Anyway, she's quite, I can't even remember what I was fucking saying there. It's, it's hot and I'm bothered, leave me alone. Uh, anyway, this is basically Striker. This is the gorgeous girl herself. Oh, God, the fucking lighting in here is just a treasure. Hang on, let me see if I can sort that out and make... Mm, that's not much better. Oh, that's not too bad, actually. You can kind of see what I'm getting at here. Now, you see these wheels that are hanging down on her waists? They could have left them there, and she would have been fine. But... This transformation is awesome. Pull them up like that. They're on little sliders, and you slot them into her torso to make this very, very beefy, solid-looking bot. She just looks the business in this mode. I adore 
this bot mode. This is reason enough to go for some Beast Machines toys insofar as I'm concerned. Or just this one. She is utterly beautiful. I love her skinny legs and that big beefy torso. I love the way the wheels become her feet. And it looks sort of like she doesn't have hands if you look at her from a particular angle, but she does. There are little hands and digits, like spidery little digits, inside these forearm armor pieces. It's absolutely brilliant. As for her head sculpt, she has this sort of elongated head with a gas mask thing going on. I love that. I really love it. This girl is awesome. And if you don't have her, do yourself a favour and go and get her. She's a little bit expensive these days. Um, for, and once again, Logan, thank you so much for selling me these for a very, very, very reasonable price indeed. They are taking pride of place at the moment. She is one of my favourite bots at the moment to just pick up and play with. Because just, just look at that bot mode. It's great. It's massive and Beefy, chocked full of details, she's articulate, female Transformer, big old bull dyke of a Transformer. And that's what her character is like, I can tell you. She's like a sort of military mom style character. She doesn't take any shit from the Maximals at all. Awesome character. Pair of them together. You need these two as a pair, because they, they come as a pair. You know, they are um, their partners, their consorts. They are two of Cybertron's most decorated generals, apparently. Who knew? Obsidian and Striker. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful toys. Go get them.